Hello Brain Shakers, Brave LST is here from the Brain Shakers Academy with yet another exciting uh, session for today. Now today we're going to be looking at placenta uh, functions or rather the functions of the placenta and what it does and the most easiest way to remember them. Now let's quickly get into it and know how best we can remember the functions of the placenta. So in the human body there is a part or an organ that is referred to as the spleen. Now, the spleen is an organ that does uh, its own functions, performs its own functions. Sequestration of red blood cells and all uh, that kind of uh, stuff. But we're not interested in what it does. We're interested in just the terminology itself. So the spleen is written like this. Spleen. Now, for us to be able to remember placenta functions, let's replace the L with an R and it will sound as spring. Now, what is the S for? So, the S is for storage functions, so meaning that the placenta has storage functions. And then you have the P, which is for protective functions. So the placenta has protective functions. The R here is for respiration. It means that at the placenta side, there is some form of respiration that is happening. Then we have an E here, which is obviously excretion to get rid of waste materials. So there is excretion functions. And then you have another E here, which is going to be endocrine functions, the production of hormones. Okay. And then after endocrine, you have N, which is nutrition functions. So it means that the placenta plays key role in the nourishment of that growing fetus. So if I took this out, now that we know what it is, we said it's a spleen. Spring. So we'll take it. This is our acronym now for remembering the placenta functions. So look at what the storage functions are. So the placenta does play key role in the storage of all the vitamins, all the iron and the fats that are actually gotten from the maternal circulation. And so it stores them within it. So you have all the vitamins, you have the fats, you have all the amino glycosides. They are stored right there in the placenta and then passed on to the fetus when they are required for nourishment. Protective function. Under protective function here you have uh, the placenta playing key role as a selectively permeable membrane allowing certain things into uh, the into the placenta then crossing over to the baby and certain things from the baby crossing over to the maternal side. Now of importance also is that the placenta has the capacity to allow certain antibodies to cross over from the mother to the baby thereby giving the baby some form of passive immunity and one of the commonest um, immunoglobulins that are produced is actually IgG. So you have an immunoglobulin G that then crosses over the placenta to the fetus to give the fetus, uh, um, once it is delivered, to give the, uh, that uh, growing uh, baby in the first three months of life some form of passive immunity. And so it allows certain drugs as well to pass through and go and reach uh, the, um, the developing fetus in there, whereas certain drugs cannot cross over the placenta. So if you are giving something and you're giving a drug that is in particular targeting the fetus, you need to know which drugs have the capacity to cross the placenta. And also even as you're giving medication, Medication. If you're treating maternal infection, you're treating a maternal condition and you do not want the fetus to be affected, then you have to look at what are some of those drugs that have no capacity to cross through the placenta. You have respiratory functions. Under respiratory functions, we know that the fetus gets its oxygen from a maternal supply. So once the uh, gaseous exchange has happened around the capillary bed in the placenta there, then oxygen is going to obviously come in to the, those vessels through the vein. So you have oxygen moving into the vein and then 
after all the utilization processes have happened in the fetus, the fetus then sends down carbon dioxide to excrete it into the placenta. And so that is the formation or the function of respiration. So it means there's some respiration there that is happening. Then you have an element of excretion, which is basically getting rid one of the commonest forms that um, elements or substances that the fetus gets rid of is carbon dioxide. So it excretes carbon dioxide through the placenta, but also excretes some form of urea and uric acids through the placenta to maternal circulation. And then that is reprocessed again. So you have endocrine functions. Now, endocrine functions is a major function for the placenta because the placenta produces quite a number of hormones. One of the hormones the placenta produces is known as the HCG hormone. Now, the HCG hormone is what we call the human chorionic gonadotrophin hormone. And this hormone begins to be produced around the eighth, ninth day. And this is the hormone that has the capacity to be excreted in urine as well. So a pregnant woman would excrete this in urine such that when we get a urine sample and test it for pregnancy, then it to give us a positive test. Why? Because there is more human chorionic gonadotrophin that is being produced. Now, the human chorionic gonadotrophin production is actually... Uh, plays a key role also in the acceptance of this growing embryo by the uterine decidua so that there is no rejection and the growing fetus is not considered as a foreign body but is accepted because it contains that human chorionic gonadotrophin. You have other hormones like steroid hormones where you have estrogen as well being produced. Okay, estrogen and then you all have a progesterone as well being produced by the by the placenta this is obviously uh, was previously produced by the corpus luteum. Now, since the corpus luteum would have already uh, degenerated there, the placenta takes up that responsibility of producing estrogen and a progesterone. You have another hormone that is produced by the placenta, which we call the HPL or the human placental lactogen. Okay, so the human placental lactogen or the HPL hormone is the hormone that is responsible for fat metabolism. So all the parts that are coming from the maternal circulation. So you have the placenta and then you have the umbilical cord here. So placenta and everything that is coming in from the maternal circulation coming into uh, the fetus, the human placental lactogen there breaks down those fats into elements that can then be passed on to the fetus or be stored within the placenta and later passed on when there is need for utilization. And this is one of the hormones as well that plays key role in making sure that there is insulin resistance and thereby creating a state State, which we call a diapetogenic state, meaning that the woman now presents with some form of hyperglycemia. Why? Because once it increases, then it alters with insulin sensitivity. Then you have another hormone, which we call the relaxing hormone. Okay, relaxing hormone. Now, relaxing hormone from the word relax relax. It actually just relaxes the muscles so that they do not begin to contract because if they contract it means the placenta also begins to separate and you may end up losing the pregnancy or the pregnancy not continuing until term. and this hormone also plays key role in the process of labor. So it goes into peak when a woman is almost getting into labor and it helps in the ripening of the cervix. Okay, It helps in the ripening of the cervix, helps helps in cervical effacement and also helps in the rupture of the membranes that is in a spontaneous onset. Obviously, if you have uh, performed an early induction of labor prior to the uh, onset of labor, then you go ahead and break the waters, then relaxing would not have done its part. But relaxing plays key role in the cervical effacement, the ripening of the cervix, and also in the rupture of membranes. Then you have the nutrition function here. Now, everything that comes from the maternal blood supply and is passing on to the fetus will have to be uh, dealt with the placenta. So the nutrition function, as we looked at another video that looks at the placenta and how it is formed, um, 
the process of a placentation you can find it on my youtube channel which is the brain shakers academy placentation it talks about nutritive villi now you have villi there that are floating into the leg of maternal blood supply and absorbing all the relevant amino acids the vitamins the glycoproteins all the fats and everything that the baby or the growing fetus is then going to need so that will be the placenta performing its nutrition function so basically those are the functions of the placenta and as we have said you can remember them as spring which is storage functions protective functions respiratory functions excretory functions endocrine functions and nutrition functions so in in a, in a nutshell, basically, those are the functions of the placenta. Now, if you found that video particularly interesting and helpful in understanding and continuously remembering the functions of the placenta, don't hesitate to give me a thumbs up. Drop me comments in the comments section. I'd like to hear what you think about it. And I'll be sharing a few acronyms as well that will help you remember certain things. And as always, it's a pleasure for you to be watching. And please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Brain Shakers Academy. And as as always, I will see you in the next one.